It's been about two months since the Extra Beam Pro came out with this device right here. And since then, I've made a couple of videos and Extra has dropped, I think, two or three major updates. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be going over some of the updates. And I'm also going to show you guys some tips and tricks that I can almost guarantee you haven't seen anywhere. I've been using this device extensively pretty much every single day since I got it before it was even released when I got it as a beta tester. I've been trying a bunch of things and I have come across some tips and tricks that I plan on showing you guys. I want to start off this video by I don't I want to start off by saying that this is not a sponsored video. Extra has never paid or sponsored me for any videos ever since I've been working with them. And um, I see some people ask me that, you know, are you paid? Or some people say that I know this is a paid video. No, none of that. You know, making YouTube videos is actually a bit more challenging than I expected it to be because I want to keep making contents and there are a lot of companies uh, reaching out to me to make video contents for their products, but they're giving me a little bit of a hard time because they will tell me things like, oh, when you make the video, they want me to send them a copy so that they can review first. And I'm like, no. I'm going to make the video, I'm going to state my opinion, and I'm going to put it out there. And you guys can see at the same time, everyone else sees it, but then they stop responding. So every now and then, you know, I do come across some companies who just allow me to make a video, say whatever I want to say, and post the video. And they get to see it at the same time as everyone else get to see it. Xreal is one of those companies. Pretty much every video of a product that you've seen on my channel has been exactly that. Um, I make videos, I review them, and I give my opinions. No one pays me, no one has paid me, no one has sponsored me. Every single video that I've ever made on YouTube has been 100% my opinion. None of them are telling me, hey, you gotta say this, or you can't say that, whatever it is. Everything has been strictly my opinion. But now let me get behind the camera and show you some really, really cool tricks that this thing is capable of, and some things that you might need a little bit more accessories. I'm talking about this along with this, but let's get behind the camera. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you guys is how to navigate your extra beam with your watch. As you guys can see, I have a mouse here. You can see it here. It's moving as I move my arm. You see that? Up and down left right if i want to click something let's say i want to click this right here or actually um let's say i want to go to yeah let's just click my glasses as you guys can see i pinch my fingers together and i can click something if i want to uh, click the let me see notification bar as you guys can see Oh, I don't have Wi-Fi connected right now, but let me go back to it and Wi-Fi. Turn on my Wi-Fi. Uh, connect to my office. But anyways, now it's time for me to connect uh, the watch. I mean, now now it's time for me to connect my glasses into this device right here and show you guys how you can use this to work in nebula space and if you want to pause the control of this all you have to do is tap on this green icon and it, and it disables that gesture that way you can um that way you don't have this constantly running every time you can also connect this to multiple devices so you go into your settings um go into your setting you go into the gestures here actually you go into this part right here click on it you can see i am connected to the beam pro i can connect to my z fold or i can uh, search and connect to my computer this is a really great app so now connect the glasses Okay, so the mouse is now connected. As you guys can see, as I'm moving my arms around, 
the mouse is moving around. So in this case, let me click on edge. As you guys can see, the mouse is now connected to Microsoft Edge or any app that I open. The only downside is there's no real way to scroll unless you do this right here. You use the bezel and now you can actually scroll through the watch. Anyways, so that's the mouse app. What you guys can do is you guys can connect your watch if you have an Android Wear watch to your Beam Pro, play around with it and see if it works out for you. All right, so the next tips and trick that I wanna show you is a quick way to navigate your extra beam. Now, typically, let me turn this light off. So typically, if you wanna navigate your extra beam, you wanna to go to your home screen or change your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, or any of those settings, you would have to go all the way up here, click this, minimize this first, and then you have access to it. But there's a much easier way to do that and the way that I do it is by clicking this button right here, uh, quick quick access, I mean quick settings, and now this whole notification bar just drop down. Now I can swipe back or I can even uh, take a screenshot with this right here, do notifications, uh, recent apps, volume up, volume down, brightness down, you know, all kinds of different settings. I can even access my assistant right here. The way I did this is by using accessibility settings. And the way to do that is also by clicking on accessibility settings right here. As you guys can see, I have extra dim on by the way. So to do this, you will need to go to the accessibility menu and you wanna turn this on. Now turning this on will give you this button right here. You can choose where you want the button to go on your screen. You can choose to be up or down. You can swipe it up or down. You can completely close it. I personally like to put it right here because my hands, my thumb can easily reach it opposed to the one that extra beam has, which is all the way up here. Now with this, I can use it. I can easily pull up any menu that I want. You know, my favorite thing is to quick, uh, to pull up quick settings. So another thing you can do is you go to more options. You can change the size, uh, the button, you can change the transparency mode. I don't want mine all the way too visible, but at the same time, I want it visible enough where I can actually see it. As you guys can see, this is a uh, 0% trans uh, transparency, and this is 100%, well, almost 100% transparent. You can still see it at the corner here, but I like to put it somewhere around here, that way I can easily see it. And you can have this option right here. It's called fade when not in use. That way, so if you want, so if you use it, it's gonna brighten up. As you guys can see, let me swipe up again. It's gonna brighten up when you uh, when you when you're using it. When you're done using it, it's gonna fade back into the background. So that's how you uh, easily and quickly navigate through your Xreal Beam. As you guys can see, the only other option is using the Xreals, which is all the way up here. You have to press this and then you can access your home screen and then you can access you know, your settings. So there's multiple steps. Whereas if you're right here and you have the accessibility uh, button on, so let's say you're right here, right? You have the accessibility button turned on, you just press this. My thumb can easily reach it and I can choose whatever settings that I want. You can take a screenshot or you can just easily press the quick settings and your whole thing will come up. You can see, you know, all your settings and stuff like that. You can change whatever it is you want to change and you go right back to using your beam the way you want to use it. The next tip I want to tell you guys about is how to uh, mirror your computer screen. With the update, now you have Miracast, which you can use right here. But the thing with Miracast is it only uh, mirrors your PC screen. It doesn't give you ability to interact with your screen. To interact with your PC, what you would want is either Chrome's remote, uh, Google, uh, either Google's Chrome remote desktop, or the better one that I found is using Space Desk. Space Desk will allow you to mirror your screen either by Wi-Fi or by LAN connection, and still be able to interact with your PC, opposed to Miracast, which only mirrors your PC and doesn't give you access to actually interact with your PC. 
Now, as far as lag goes, what I found is that the uh, extra beam actually lags a little bit with Miracast. This is the only device that has ever lagged with Miracast. All my other device that works with Miracast never ever lag. So in this case, you would want to use either, like I said, the remote desktop by Chrome or Space Desk. Okay. So what you guys see here is me using multi windows. Um, looking at my computer right now th through diff uh, two different softwares. Here I have Space Dex and here I have Remote Desktop by Google. This is the same computer, just having two screens. So you can effectively have multi windows with this setup right here. And with this case, you can interact with your windows. The last tip I want to show you guys is how to have multiple accounts on the Beam Pro. What I mean by that is, for example, I watch Prime videos on this uh, device right here, right? And there are some things that I have access to and there are some shows that I don't have access to. My girl also has Prime videos and I'm able to use her account. But the thing is, with your Beam Pro, you can only log in to one instances of Prime video. So for example, here I can watch Prime videos and if I want to have things downloaded, I can't log out. So in this case, I have movies and shows downloaded, but I'm not able to log out. If I want to watch something on my girl's account, I can't do that because if this, the moment I log out, then all my downloaded stuff gets deleted. The way around this is by having two accounts. So for example, right here, you can see on this part of the Beam Pro, you can see this part right here, allows me to have multiple accounts. So here I have King, which is my uh, current account right now. And Max, when I log into Max, it, it feels like I'm on an entirely different Beam Pro. All my apps are different. My even, even my password to log into the phone is different. So now that I'm on a different account, I can literally my home screen can be different. Uh, Samsung does this a lot with uh, most of the devices, as you can see here. Now I have an entirely different device. The apps are different. Uh, if the apps are different, the settings are different. And now I have Prime, as you guys can see, now I'm on an entirely different Prime account. Now I can watch this show called Banshee that my girl told me about without having to uh, worry about all the other, without having to worry about deleting stuff from my other account. This is a great way to share the device or just simply, in my case, be able to use the same app, but without having to log out just by switching your account, you know? So if I wanna switch back, now I can switch back to King, which is my main Beam Pro, and then the device completely switches. It's basically like having Windows where you can have multiple accounts and when, whenever you log in, your settings are different, your apps are different, and things like that. Another thing you can do is you can go to the develop option, developer options of this device right here and force desktop mode. By forcing desktop mode, this will allow you to have multiple apps open in uh, the Nebula OS. You know, right now you are limited to just two screens. With forced desktop mode, you can actually have multiple apps open. But this is something that, uh, you know, it's not going to be very stable because it's not designed for, but the option is there. Okay, on this side, uh, I've got Hulu. Here, I've got YouTube. Here, I've got Microsoft Edge, which I can resize. And I can still open another app. Let me open uh, Discord. And I can also move and resize. Another thing that I want to show you guys is uh, in the extra settings, if you tap this multiple times, you can actually activate the developer option for Nebula OS. And when you do that, you're going to get this part right here. So let me show you guys. As you guys can see, developer option is now open. What you want to do is you want to use some screen translating device to translate this so that way you can figure out what it is, what they are. But essentially you want to go to this click uh, select other MR app right here. This portion right here will allow you to open almost, well, I won't say almost, but you, it would allow you to open many of the apps that used to run on the other Nebular 
the Android Nebula version, you can actually open it now with your regular Beam Pro without having to download the Nebula from the Play Store. For example, Ginger XR actually works uh, with this method. All you have to do is click on this, and now, whenever next time you connect your glasses, you can actually start and open Ginger XR from this right here. So instead of this device booting into Nebula OS when you plug in your glasses, it would actually open. Uh, it would open Ginger XR. You can do this. You can do the same thing for X-ray glasses. X-ray glasses works very well. I haven't tried VLC 3D, but uh, Maze. I don't think Maze run and XR streaming also wasn't working. But Ginger XR, I've tried. It worked. Uh, X-ray glasses also worked. I haven't tried uh, other apps, but this is a this is another way to open all those apps there you wish you could open with uh, Nebula OS. Although the fact that this is uh, not activated by default, I would say that actually probably doesn't recommend it, but they also wouldn't put it in an update if it wasn't something they were trying. All I can tell you is X-ray glasses works very, very well with this method. And yeah. So that's pretty much all the updates and tips and tricks that I have for you guys in these videos. If there are more stuff that I didn't cover, uh, please put them in the comment section. That way other people can see it. That way I can see it as well. You know, there are some things that I don't know. So it might be, uh, it might be good for me to actually learn from you guys as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. You know, stay tuned for more content. Oh, and if you want to use a PC, and have a good way to to control your pc and type a foldable keyboard might be a good way i've already talked about this in my previous videos but just to you know remind you guys affordable keyboard could be a better option and obviously you want a wireless mouse i like this mouse a lot i think i got this for like five dollars i like it because it's a really soft key but oh yeah anyway that's the option thank you guys for watching see you guys in the next one peace